Merchandising your store is one of the most passive ways that we can sell in our store. It really is a tool that can severely be underutilized. Uh, one perfect example is what you see behind me. Currently we have blank walls which we are putting posters up because what you have to think of in your store is that every square inch of retail space that we pay rent on is an opportunity to promote a product, promote a service that in some way, shape or form has the ability to generate a revenue for our business and by not utilizing that space, we're simply throwing money down the drain. So we're going to go through a few things of what you can do to check that your space is in the best position possible to be uh, optimally merchandised in your store. So what you want to think about is the customer experience first and foremost. When they walk in the store, what greets them? And if what greets them is, and, and I'm just talking physical things here, not you, but if what we're talking about is an empty space, that, that's, a, that's not a good thing. What we want there is something, a small table, a, a small island, um, any sort of pop-up with a message, whether it's a special of the day like they do in restaurants or uh, the sale of the day um, or an event, just something needs to greet them. And it needs to greet them within their first foot and a half in the door, meaning that as soon as they step in, either directly in front of them, uh, directly to an angle somewhere, they're seeing something that immediately takes their, their eyes and their attention to spending money in some capacity. Surrounding that would be what I'm gonna say auxiliary products, meaning maybe they're small gift set pop-ups that kind of warm them up to uh, what we are, what we have uh, in the store. Um, later, as they proceed through the store, there needs to be you know, signage. Typically at the very back of the store, we have a, a banner wall that has a big logo, big uh, mission statement or, or something. And we wanna have signage in other places that promotes, in our case, kitchen party signups. Definitely one, maybe two different spots promoting and or giving them the opportunity to sign up. Same thing for knife skills classes. One for sure, maybe two. Typically, you want this to be in a high traffic area where people stop and spend time, like Money Island. Uh, Money Island, you, what you want to have there is all of your um, high dollar sellables, meaning you've got a set. Uh, you've got, maybe it's surrounded with wellness mats, a higher end non-cutco product. Um, things they can maybe grab, pick up, play with uh, at Money Island. And then surrounding your store, um, you know, kind of encasing that. What you'd like to have is what I like to call grabbables, things that people can just sort of see, they can figure out, hopefully they sell themselves, and there's enough of them that they can just grab them right off the hook. And, and what you want to be mindful of is, you know, what do you have out? Do you have things on a hook that can hang versus sitting on a shelf? People are more likely to pick things up if they come off the hanger. Taking that a step further, are there two things on the hook or are there six things on the hook? Because if there's two, sometimes people feel guilty about, well, I don't even know if I really want to buy this and I don't want to take the last one. So having your shelves and your hangers, your hooks, full uh, front and center, you want things to be eye level. Whether you're tall or short, think about the average person. Most things need to be at eye level and then be able to be reached. Front, center, every shelf and hanger looking full, um, and as many things that come on a hook have a tab uh, that can just be hung and displayed to allow easier access for the customer to grab it off the wall, the more likely you're just gonna sell things without needing to sell them. And what you wanna do is sort of set up departments, if you will. As an example, you probably shouldn't put spices right next to cleaning products. There's not a lot of flow for that. But you put spices next to graters, next to preserves. Those are things that kind of go together because you can see how you use graters to maybe shave down things, make a sprinkling, a topping. That flows with spices. Spices are consumables. Those flow with preserves. Preserves flow with spatulas. 
So then you've got your spatulas and your spoons. Those can go with cookware, you know, and, and that progression along your wall now starts to make sense to the subconscious mind. So those are things you want to take into consideration uh, when setting up and merchandising your store with products. You know, above all else, you obviously want to have a clean store, uh, an organized store. Again, things front and center, eye level, easy to grab. And you always want to be thematic in that if it's Valentine's Day, Valentine's Day decorations should still be up, but they're coming down tomorrow. Uh, if it's 4th of July, Valentine's decorations should be at the very back of your store, at the bottom of the closet, nowhere to be seen. But there's always something to be promoted, whether it's January, whether it's June, August, it doesn't matter what month or what week of what month it is, there's something next that needs to be promoted. And now that is your calling card of what sales are going on, what products are on sale, what things are popular and timely right now. And that might allow you to switch your store around to, you know, when hunting season comes up, you might cause more attention, bring more attention to the outdoor pieces. Uh, when it's wedding season, you might have up a lot more gift wrapping and white uh, wedding themed wrapping paper, even just around empty boxes, uh, whatever it might be, but always be t on theme, uh, whatever seasonal, whatever's trendy, um, and, and have those things displayed throughout your store, even though we want to have it segmented to an extent so people know where to go in your store. It's okay to sprinkle things in, as an example, in your cookware display to have some of those rubber and silicone spatulas or near the preserves to have those spatulas or uh, near your, uh, your gift sets even to have some of those jars of preserves uh, and some of those uh, pre-wrapped gifts and grip sticks and other things that can just be partnered and paired well together because the more customers see it the more like okay I keep seeing that that must be important or that must be popular what is that and a lot of the things that we carry in the store uh, they do need to be demonstrated and so the more time and attention you can bring to them the more likely the customer will bring them up to you uh, which just opens the door uh, to Pandora's box of, of selling so um, those are a few things again to recap when people first walk in, what greets them? What is surrounding your store? What type of signage do you have displayed that promotes who we are, what we are, and what we have going on to get them involved in? Where are those things located in your store? Accessibility, you know, are things easy to grab, easy to find, easy to see? Do things look full or do they look like you're running out, uh, which isn't necessarily a good thing? Uh, for what sometimes people think about when they decide whether or not to grab that last item or second to last item. And then just being timely, being on theme, um, and having the proper uh, display decorations along with your merchandising of your products uh, throughout your store. So uh, use those things. Uh, merchandising is a constant evolutionary ongoing cycle that you do on a surely a monthly uh, and sometimes a bi-weekly basis.